What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a bonus video for you and it is new release review where I give you my thoughts and opinions about the brand new releases that I've been watching lately. Are they worth your time? And most importantly, are they worth your money? So I'm starting off with a couple of movies that I'm sure you're gonna be shocked that these were first time watches for me. It's Avatar. Avatar and also Avatar The Way of Water. Why is it taking me so long to watch the first Avatar? The Way of Water is understandable. It's a recent new release. It just came out last year, but the original Avatar has been out since what, 2009? And this was my first time watching it. So with these films, I had to mentally prepare myself because they are longer movies. So you gotta kind of be in that frame of mind okay, I'm going to watch a long film. It's kind of like with The Godfather. Those movies are long too. So you have to mentally prepare yourself, mentally and also physically, because you're sitting there for about three hours and you're watching this film. So I had to do the same thing with the Avatar movies. I decided one night, you know what? I'm ready. It's time for Avatar. I did not do a double feature, by the way. I had to break these up. There was no way I was going to do a double feature in one night because that would be insane. But I know you want to know the answer to the big question. Did I enjoy these films? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. I did. I actually enjoyed these movies. Say you want, say what you want about James Cameron. The man knows how to execute a film and he knows what the people want to see. And I really enjoyed these movies. I was kind of hesitant at first, especially with the first Avatar film, because they are sci-fi. They fall into that genre of sci-fi and I'm not the biggest fan of sci-fi movies. I don't really gravitate towards that genre. So I think that's the main reason why I never watched these before. But I gotta say, I really enjoyed these movies. First of all, they look fantastic. I mean, that was just going to be a given. James Cameron knows what he's doing and he knows how to execute films the way that he wants. He knows how he wants them to look. So I knew these were going to look amazing. Obviously with the 4K transfer, they look even better. Like this is fantastic. The sound, the look, everything about the 4K is amazing. So don't hesitate to pick these up and add these into your collections because you're definitely going to be satisfied. I really don't have anything big and negative to say about these movies. I guess only the one negative that I will say is about The Way of Water. To me, this one was a little bit too long because the runtime is over three hours. It's about three hours and 15 or 20 minutes. That's a little bit too long. I kind of felt like the third act of this film could have been trimmed down just a little bit. It didn't have to drag out as much as it did, but that's only my real negative complaint about both of these movies. So if that's my only complaint then we're doing pretty good. So shockingly enough, I did enjoy the Avatar films. Who would have guessed? <laughs> who would have guessed? Who knew I enjoyed Avatar? Okay. Which now when the third one comes out, most likely I'll want to go to the theater to see that film because those were first time watches. I didn't see them in the theater and I'm sure the theater experience is amazing for those films. So now I'll go to the theater to see it. All right, moving on to Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead Rise on 4K. I've talked about this one before, but it is a new release, so I got to talk about it again. This is a definite pickup. If you're a fan of the Evil Dead franchise, then don't hesitate to pick this one up. Always try to price match. That's what I did because this one originally came out on 4K for $34.99 and Amazon had it for about, I think, $10 cheaper. So definitely try to price match if you can, but add it in. You're not going to regret it. It's another solid installment to this already consistent franchise. It's much like the Scream franchise. Every movie that comes out it's got its own essence, you know what I mean? Like its own essence, its own flavor, but it's consistent. It's a well done film. The negatives that I have about this movie are very few and far between. The one main negative for me is at the very end, I'm going to try not to spoil, but those of you that have seen this movie, when it gets to the point where 
the giant creation is made, I guess is what I'll say. When the giant creation is made, I wasn't the biggest fan of that. I kind of wish that they remained individuals. And I kind of also wanted more of the mother character when she turns evil. I believe the actress's name is Alyssa Sutherland. And she did an amazing job. And I feel like once they kind of pushed her out the door into the hallway, all the focus went to other characters, you know, the, the kid characters and everything. And, and she did, she was kind of pushed off to the side and I was kind of upset to see that she was incorporated back in, but not as much. Like she was having great moments when she first turned evil. And I just wanted that through and through. I would have been satisfied if she was the only evil entity in the entire film, they didn't really have to change anyone else for me to be happy because she was doing such an amazing job by herself. I thought she could have just taken it, you know, like it could have just focused on her, but they didn't. They turned other characters. And like I said, the, the thing at the end, it does look like something from the thing movie. I think Tony P and I talked about that and we weren't the biggest fans of that. But that's like nitpicking. That's really nitpicking. I enjoyed the film. Definitely will watch again. And the 4K transfer is nice on this one. So definitely pick this one up. Add it into your collections. All right. Now we are switching over to a regular Blu-ray. I know I still pick up regular Blu-rays too. And this movie is falling under the radar. I feel like no one is talking about this film. It is a good person. A good person with Florence Pugh and also Morgan Freeman. Now I picked up this movie during the Target buy two get one free sale. I took a chance with it. Total blind buy. This was a smaller movie that came out in the theater. It didn't really make a lot of money but I was always curious about it because I like Florence Pugh as an actress and I wanted to see what this one was all about and I don't think it was coming to streaming anytime soon and I really wanted to check it out. So I decided to just, you know, roll the dice, take that chance and pick it up and pick it up during the buy two, get one free sale. This movie is so good. I believe it is directed and written by Zach Braff, who we know from Scrubs. Him and Florence Pugh were dating at the time that this movie was made. Probably the reason why she's in the film, but she is excellent in this movie. Basically, the, the all-around plot of this film, you have Florence Pugh who is engaged to be married and she's at the happiest time in her life. You can tell like her career is fantastic. Her life is fantastic. She's getting married like very, very shortly. And she has a car accident, a massive car accident. And inside the car was a couple of her in-laws, her future sister-in-law and her husband. So unfortunately... They're lost in the car crash and Florence Pugh is the only survivor. So she's dealing with survivor guilt, but also she becomes addicted to painkillers on top of that. So the entire movie, she's dealing with these issues, with the guilt and also with the addiction. And it is just so good. The way this movie is directed, the writing, Zach Braff is really good at directing and writing. I'm not totally familiar with all of his work. I know he's directed a few films, a few projects that he's done, but this was so, so good. And Morgan Freeman plays the father of the fiance's, like the father of the in-law, no, like Morgan Freeman was gonna be her father-in-law. There we go. <laughs> so Morgan Freeman is mourning the loss of his daughter and his son-in-law and there's that conflicting you know pull and pull push and pull the dynamic relationship between him and Florence Pugh he's trying to forgive her in this movie there's a lot going on there is a lot happening in this film every day <laughs> every day it's not a video without a car going by there's a lot going on in this movie and it's really relatable because I know addiction to painkillers is a massive problem here in the U.S. A lot of people are trying to beat it, trying to kick the addiction. And this was a great watch. So I highly recommend this one. If you're kind of on the fence about it, 
I would definitely get it. Some people would consider would consider it a one-time watch, but I know I will watch this one again. Morgan Freeman, by the way, his acting, he's just wonderful. He's just wonderful in everything. He's on a different level when it comes to acting. I put him, Willem Dafoe in the same category. It doesn't matter. They could be reading the telephone book and you're interested. You know what I'm saying? So this one's a great one. Don't miss out. A good person. Okay. Switching gears to super serious to comedy because we need to laugh. We have National Lampoon's Vacation. I almost said Christmas Vacation. <laughs> National Lampoon's Vacation 4K slipcover. So I was super excited when this movie was announced to get a 4K upgrade because this film is one of my favorite 80s comedies. It was funny back in the 80s and it still holds up today. It's not exactly the most PC movie, I will say that, but you know what, who cares? Lighten up with it. Not everything has to be super serious, but I so enjoyed revisiting this. My mom and I watched it together and we were laughing hysterically the entire way through. This is just one of those classic funny comedies that never gets old. It's, it's quotable. It's just so good. Now, as far as the 4k transfer goes, was I impressed with this? I wasn't overly impressed. It's good. It's definitely an upgrade from the Blu-ray. I will say that, but it doesn't knock my socks off. I wouldn't put it in the top 10 of the year. The slipcover, I would. <laughs> the slipcover is looking great, but as far as the 4k transfer, it was like, okay, it's good, but it didn't blow my mind. It's not super fantastic. Just to give you guys a warning. So because of that, I would maybe advise you to wait for a sale. If this goes down in price to like $17 or $18.99, then scoop it up. But it's not one you absolutely have to pick up right away. Also, another factor I do want to let you know about, the only special feature on this 4K is a commentary. There's no behind the scenes nothing else, no other interviews or anything like that. But I think there are on the Blu-ray. So if you do own a Blu-ray copy of this movie, you may want to keep it for the special features, just to let you guys know, which I will be keeping mine because mine's a double pack of vacation and European vacation. And I don't know if European is getting a 4K, possibly. Who knows? I don't know. It may happen in the future, but for right now, I'm keeping my double pack. Okay. Moving on next to Dan it, Dan it, Jaws 2, Dan it. <laughs> All right, enough of me being corny, but that's what I love to do here on my channel. I am so weird. So we have Jaws 2, Steelbook. Really enjoying the look of the Steelbook. I like all the teeth. Here we go. And the back is just the fin, nice and simple. So Jaws 2 is a fun watch. I mentioned this before. I believe it's an underrated sequel. It's kind of like Psycho 2, how Psycho 2 is an underrated sequel. I feel like Jaws 2 is underrated as well because 3 and 4 get so much hate and I'm included in that. I'm not a fan of 3 and 4. Do I have the triple pack? Yes, I do. <laughs> but I'm not the biggest fan of 3 and 4, especially 3. I think three is the worst. I got to be honest. I'll take four over three because at least during part four, I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing my butt off during part four because the circumstances are just ridiculous. But anyway, part two, I feel like it's lumped in with three and four as being bad sequels. It's not the original. Nothing is the original Jaws. Nothing will touch that movie. It is literally perfection in my opinion. This one does have flaws but it is entertaining. At least we have Brody in this movie. We don't have a whole new cast of characters that we're unfamiliar with. Yeah, it's a little bit ridiculous, but it's fun. It's like ridiculous fun. So I enjoy Jaws too. And as far as the transfer goes, I'll put it in the category with Vacation. It didn't wow me. It is decent. It is an upgrade. You can tell that but it's not like the original Jaws 4K transfer because that one is really, really well done. And this one is like, okay, you look good. <laughs> you look good. You could be better, but you look decent. You know, it's one of those. So again, with this one, you could wait for a sale. In fact, the 4K slip was just on sale 
I think last week for $19.99. So if you want to wait for a sale for the steel book, then I would recommend. But I do recommend that you pick it up because everyone should have Jaws 2. Underrated. All right, here we go. Moving on next to Mall Rats. Mall Rats 4K from Arrow. Now I wasn't going to pick this one up at first, but I had my budget for that Tuesday all planned out. And the Truman Show was not in store. So I figure I'll pick up Mall Rats because it was there. It was $24.99. So I took a shot. I took a gamble. I did own the Blu-ray already. I've seen the movie one time. I got to be honest. I wasn't overly impressed <laughs> with the Blu-ray. With the movie when I saw it. I was like, oh, that was an all right movie. But I wasn't like, wow, that was super funny. I got to say. Watching this 4K transfer with my father, we were watching this one together. He didn't make it until the very end, but Daddy Blu-ray and I, we've been watching a lot of movies together lately, and I've really been enjoying it. We've been bonding over film. He's been going with me to the movies as well. It's been a good time. So he was watching Mall Rats with me, and we were laughing. We were laughing our butt off. I think I was probably laughing because my dad was laughing. Whenever my dad is laughing, that always makes me happy. So I think that might have been it. But I really enjoyed watching this more the second time around. And I will say the 4K transfer is really nice on this one. Arrow always does a great job with their 4Ks, with their products. And that's why they're one of my favorite boutique labels to buy from because they're all about quality. And this 4K transfer, I would say, is one of the best of the year so far. It is one of the best. So Definitely, I recommend Mall Rats. And if you could find it at your Best Buy for only $24.99, then I recommend picking it up. It is worth it. So definitely pick up Mall Rats. Okay, so now we're getting into an obvious favorite Scream 6. <laughs> Scream 6, which I have seen so many times, and I'm opting to show you the 4K slip versus the steel book because I already showed you the steel book in the previous video. So I'm going to show you the 4K slip because I did the double dip. I got the steel book and the slip cover. I can't help it. Fan of the Scream franchise. So I'm going to go for both. This held up. I saw this twice in the theater and ever since it hit Paramount Plus a hundred times I've watched it. I don't know. See, the thing is, I put it on as background noise while I'm prepping work for YouTube, but I'm not actually watching the movie. I'm just listening to it because I'm sitting here on my bed. I got the movie going across from me, but I'm only listening to the dialogue. I'm not actually watching the movie, so I don't consider myself watching the film a hundred times. I'm not, <laughs> but... Overall, I enjoy the movie for what it is. Is it perfect? No. Are there ridiculous parts? Yes, absolutely. But it's better than three. I would put it, it's better than five. When I did my Scream 6 ranking, I believe, or my Scream ranking, I put six, I believe, in third place. That's probably going to be adjusted because I have noticed, like, upon watching it a couple of times, a little bit of issues here and there that would bring it down maybe a notch or two. But I mean, what they did with this movie, they amped up the gore, they amped up the blood. I love the, you know, the falling from the ladder kill and her smashing her face on the garbage. I think that's my favorite kill of the, of this, it's not my favorite kill of the franchise, but my favorite kill of this movie. It has a great opening sequence kill. I love that. That was outside the box and different. They did a lot of risks. They took some risks in this movie. Some of them paid off and some of them didn't. I will say the reveal of the killers was kind of formulaic, if you will, because it seems like five, six, and eventual seven is following a formula of one, two, and three. If you guys have seen these movies, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but this is fun. Again, it's consistent with the franchise. These movies... Even when they're quote-unquote bad, like bottom tier Scream 3, I still enjoy watching these films. I don't get bored with them. I can watch them a million times and I'm still entertained by them. And that's saying a lot. That really is saying a lot. Scream is one of the most consistent franchises of all time, in my opinion, and definitely one of the best of the horror genre. So Scream 6 lives up 
It does. I mean, the 4K transfer is a recent film, so of course it's going to look good. So there's no issues there. Sound is great. When you have it up, it's really booming, you know, so especially when the intense sequences come in, the entire apartment chase scene and, you know, the ladder kill and everything, the sound is really booming there. So I enjoy it. It's a guilty pleasure. I love these movies. You guys know that I do. So am I going to recommend? Yes. Go out and pick up Scream 6. You won't regret it. You won't. If you do, we're not friends. <laughs> we can't be friends. We're no longer friends. All right, now we are getting into Tom Cruise because this month has been so far, or it is, Tom Cruise watching month because with Mission Impossible, the brand new movie coming out, I just figured now is the time. Let's honor Tom Cruise. Let's celebrate him. So I've been watching a lot of Tom Cruise every single night watching a Tom Cruise movie. So we have The Firm. I love this slipcover. This slipcover is just like, for some reason, it's like one of the best of the year. <laughs> I love the color palette of this slipcover. It's nice and glossy. As you guys can see, the ring light is like bouncing off of it. I love it. The black and the blue. But this is the firm nonetheless. And this was a first time watch for me. I'd never seen this movie before. This is a great thriller. There we go. I don't want the ring light bouncing. This is a great thriller and this one really kept me on the edge of my seat because you're wondering the entire time, how is he going to get out of the situation? Because it seems like his character, he plays a lawyer in this movie and he's like a new recruited lawyer. He's fresh out of law school and he gets recruited by this law firm, but they're kind of sketchy. It's like they got their own agenda with things and they're, they're not honest, you know, they're, they're a little questionable. It seems like every star under the sun is in this movie. Holly Hunter, you have Gene Hackman, Gary Busey's in this film when he was normal. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of talent in this film that I did not realize. And this was a great, great film. And this is based off of, right, John Grisham? I'm trying to say, yes, John Grisham's novel, The Firm. And I believe he was a lawyer before he became an author. So that really enhanced his skills when he was writing. So I really enjoyed this one. Now, as far as the 4K transfer, let's talk about that for a second. Again, it falls into the vacation category. It didn't blow my mind. You could definitely wait for a sale for this one. This isn't like a must have immediate pickup unless you're like a hardcore Tom Cruise fan you can wait for a sale. And the sound was okay. I gotta be honest, like some of the scenes looked really, really good. And then some of them were looking a little bit grainy still. So the 4K transfer was a little bit uneven. It just felt like some parts were better than others. But overall, I really enjoyed the movie. Great thriller. Like I said, kept me on the edge of my seat, kept me entertained, wondering how he's getting out of the situation that he's in. Good film. Good, solid movie. Okay, next up is Rain Man. Rain Man. I have not seen this movie in probably 20 years, 25 years. It's been a really, really long time. So when I heard Rain Man was getting a 4K transfer, I was really excited because I really wanted to watch this one again. And this was such a great rewatch because as an older adult, I understood the movie more because when I first watched this, I was like, I don't like 10. I was super young and I didn't understand all the circumstances and the issues that they're talking about. I was young, you know, I'm 10 years old, but I knew I wanted to watch a Tom Cruise movie for some reason. So this was it at the time and I watched it, but I didn't fully understand everything. So as an adult, fully understanding the situation, everything going on, I forgot how much of a dick Tom Cruise's character is in this movie. Oh my God. Like I wanted to slap him. I even said during the film, mom, he's so mean. He's so mean. He is, his character is so awful and so mean to Dustin Hoffman's character. But those moments that you have them going back and forth, those were my favorite moments when when they're having like little conversations with each other, when he wasn't yelling at Dustin Hoffman, but when they're actually having a conversation, 
those few moments in the movie are my favorite and they're probably everyone's favorite because they're relatable that's how you talk to your brother you know it just though but i forgot what an a-hole <laughs> tom cruise's character is in this movie but as far as the 4k transfer goes again it's a little uneven when the movie first starts i was like this isn't looking really hot it wasn't looking that great but once the movie started going the better the transfer got and it stayed that way so it starts off a little mm, a little questionable but then we get into it we get into it the movie starts going on and and it, it gets better the 4k transfer gets better so again this isn't like a must-have right away pickup you can definitely wait for a sale but this was a great nostalgia pickup for me and it is a best picture winner i want all the best picture winners so this was a must-have pickup for myself that was that was nice to revisit with my mom because i do remember when i watched it for the first time it was with my mom and dad obviously you know they were watching it and i watched it with them so that was a nice throwback for nostalgia okay the last of it is all mission impossible mission impossible baby there we go that's the the, the remainder of the new releases that we're going to quickly talk about because i'm not going to go through like every single one but really, really quickly overall, and these are clicking around because they're, there's like a sticker inside. There's not a loose disc. That's a sticker. Every single steelbook came with an IMF sticker. So that's pretty cool. I don't need six, but I don't need six stickers, but I do have them. So Mission Impossible, the entire franchise, except for Fallout, these were all first time watches for me because with the new movie, like I mentioned, I wanted to revisit, I want to not revisit, I wanted to visit all of them, get familiar with the franchise before I saw the newest film. Because for some reason, my parents and I, when Fallout came out, we went to the IMAX. I don't know. We had no prior knowledge of any, I mean, we knew about them, but we didn't, we didn't see them. <laughs> we didn't see them at the theater. We didn't rent any of them. You know what I mean? So we didn't have any like prior relationship, prior established relationship with the Mission Impossible franchise. We just randomly went to the movies one day to see Fallout. We had no idea what the heck was going on, but that was okay. So this was nice to pick up all the steelbooks which I like very, very much. There's the back of all of them and all the front have a very familiar front. So starting off with the first one, really quickly, I'll just say like little bits and pieces. The first one, super enjoyed it. This one, I know a lot of people have it like the bottom of their ranking list for some reason because it's not as big and over the top as the other films in the franchise, but I don't need every movie to be big and over the top. Sometimes simplicity is the best. And obviously this film is close, probably the closest to the actual TV show because, you know, obviously it's based off the television show. And so I enjoyed the simplicity of the first movie. Did I guess what was going to happen? Kinda. It was a little bit obvious, but I didn't care. I still had fun watching it. So that's the first one. And by the way, the 4K transfers for all of these, I'm not sure because all of these Mission Impossibles were out on 4K previously. So I'm not sure if these 4K transfers were tweaked with, you know, and like upgraded a little bit, but they all look great. They all look fantastic. So if you're interested in picking up any of these steelbooks, I highly recommend them because they all look great. Fantastic looking. All right, so here is MI2. This one I commented on my live stream was a little bit boring to me. And the reason why is because with John Woo, I believe as the director, his style, I don't think I really mesh with. There was a lot of like slow-mo scenes in here and it was just taking way too long. Because of those, it kind of took me out of the movie just a little bit. So that's the reason why I'm not the biggest fan of two. I still enjoyed it though. That's not saying anything bad. All these movies are great. But if I were to rank them, two would be at the bottom. Two would be at the bottom for me. And the villain isn't really that super fantastic either. Kind of boring. So because of those factors, then I would put two at the bottom. Okay. Mission Impossible 3. What is... I have to look at the cover to remind myself. What, because it seems like with three and four, 
I forget what they're about. Okay, so in Mission Impossible 3, we have Carrie Russell. Okay, I'm remembering. The opening with Carrie Russell's character, really unfortunate that she got taken out right in the beginning because I feel like she really could have been great throughout the entire film. So that's really unfortunate that she wasn't thoroughly in there throughout the entire movie. Is this the one with Seymour Hoffman, Philip Seymour Hoffman? I think it is. If this is the one with Philip Seymour Hoffman as the villain, love him. I think he's the best villain of the Mission Impossible franchise because he was just cold-blooded and ruthless. And that's what you need as a villain. So there's three. Then we have four. Ghost Protocol. This one was good. It was okay. I do like, what's her name? Paula Patton as the female spy. I do enjoy her, her addition into this. I really like how, I feel dumb. I just watched these and I feel like I don't remember the plot line of every single movie. But there's so many plot lines and so many people in every single film. It's kind of hard to keep it all straight. But what I enjoy about these films, you got like a nice mix of all different characters in these different films. You do have like, Luther and ooh, was it Benji? Those are like the stable characters. Once we get into like, well, Luther's always been there. Ving Rhames's character, he's always been there since like movie number one. But then Benji gets in there, and they remain consistent. But it seems like we get change ups. You know, we have Carrie Russell, she's in, she's out. Jeremy Renner, Paula Patton. You have Maggie Q in there. Like a lot of different people in the Mission Impossible franchise. You know, it's like you do a couple of movies, you're done, we get other actors to come in. I like how they keep it fresh. You know, we don't have the same actors again and again and again, except for Benji and Luther. They're kind of like the stable, you know, the sta the stables, the staples, there we go, of the franchise with Tom Cruise. So I enjoyed four. I liked four. Then we have five. Really enjoy five. This one is what? Rogue Nation. Rogue Nation was great because of the introduction of Rebecca Ferguson's character. I really enjoyed her in this one. I feel like she brought a lot to this movie and a lot to the franchise with her addition to this film. So really had a lot of fun with that one. And obviously the last one is Mission Impossible Fallout. Henry Cavill. I mean, he is just delicious, isn't he? He is just delicious beyond belief. He also played a pretty good villain as well. So I enjoyed it. And with five, six, and now seven, they're upping the ante, getting bigger and more broad and more, more unbelievable circumstances. But I hope they don't go too far <laughs> because I don't want it to get Fast and Furious Syndrome where, you know, the higher the number, the more ridiculous. Just don't go to space, Mission Impossible. Just don't go to space and you should be okay. If I see Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt in space, then it's officially Jump the Shark. So those are my quick thoughts. Not so quick. It's about a half hour video. But those are my quick thoughts and opinions about the brand new releases that I've been watching lately that you can currently get online or in store. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts about any of these movies. Do you agree with me? Yes or no? Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.